Daniel Larson, I'm sure is a name that you're probably not super surprised to hear in the media lately. In the last couple of years, especially the last like one and a half, he has grown to be a very infamous influencer, up to the point where people make fan pages and like full Reddit deep dives of his life just because of the, uh, lack of a better word, shenanigans that he gets into. Now there are some pretty great documentaries out there about Daniel Larson and kind of how he grown to be what he is today, and that's not what this video will dive into, you can feel free to look those up. Today, this video is going to be covering the latest of Daniel Larson, and that is him getting federal prison charges uh, in front of a grand jury that uh, found him guilty. And this sounds like I'm being facetious, but Daniel has charges that are racking up to 65 years in federal prison. Almost all of them are for threats he made publicly on videos that he posted, threats of bombing, threats of unaliving a bunch of different people, threats of stalking, threats of just basically a lot of violence that you can think of, all in a video game, of course, YouTube, come on. Now, Daniel is in quite the scenario as he is being picked up by the feds, the FBI themselves, specifically because he made bomb threats and death threats against the White House and the President of the United States. TO THE DAY YOU FUCKING DIE! BOMB YOU! BOMB YOU! BOMB YOU! BOMB YOU! KILL YOU! KILL YOU! KILL YOU! CALL THE FEDS ON ME YOU FUCKING liar! Just got a call from Special Agent McDougall, Daniel McDougall, and I am in apparently trouble again with the U.S. Secret Service and he is asking Bob for my exact location right this minute. So if you ever say things like this on the internet thinking that they're just jokes, well, these people will take it seriously. Now, as you can see here, Daniel has seven counts of use or threatened use of explosives. To my knowledge and all that I could find, he never actually obviously used any explosives. He's just an explosive guy and made a bunch of dumb threats. And yes, as far as the dynamite, I literally left it at that place. I just left it at the casino. So shit's about to go down. <laughs> I love that dynamite. Now, as you can see here, his fines total up to $1.7 million, and I can tell you just from knowing this much about Daniel, he does not have that kind of money, and up to 65 years in prison. Now, do I think Daniel will get 65 years in prison? No, I don't think any jury or judge is going to sentence him to that much time, but I don't think he'll get off scot-free. I think he'll go for at least probably three or more years. This is where the video kind of takes a controversial or opinionated turn. In my opinion, I think that this is very harsh because Daniel does suffer with bipolar disorder as well as being on the autism spectrum. Now, I am not at all saying that disabilities let you do whatever you want and can, you know, legally, literally give threats to people and scare them, but you have to take into account that Daniel is a very special case. Daniel is obviously suffering with some very heavy underlying psychotic disorder. A lot of the times he cannot control what he's saying. I confidently believe that Daniel would never act out any of these threats. That being said, he is not safe to be let loose without some sort of supervision, whether that be supervision with counseling or supervision in the form of like a probation check-in parole kind of thing. As you can see from the clips in this video, Daniel is unstable. Daniel believes a lot of things such as the Grace Vanderwall thing and if you don't know what that is basically Daniel firmly believed that he was in a relationship with America's Got Talent Grace Vanderwall and yes before she was of legal age this message is to Grace Vanderwall <laughs> and to the fans <laughs> we are officially dating Grace Vanderwall has told me to make this public we are officially dating so please everyone Stay tuned. Grace Vanderwall, this message is for you. I love you so much. Can you please make a video on how much you love me and post it onto YouTube and TikTok? If you do, I will help blow you up. If you can also, please message us tonight. Give us a call. I would like to know how I could get in contact with you more easily. Also, Grace, you mean the entire world to me. And I want to propose to you. If you 
want to marry me in the future, I am open to it. Love you, Grace. Stay tuned. Up to the point where he would give out, in the, in the theme of this video, threats um, to anyone who denied it or talked to Grace or stuff like that. He, on multiple occasions, threatened Grace's family and those around Grace, basically to the point where Grace kind of publicly through other people said, hey, leave me alone, and gave a few but very vague public addresses to Daniel. I am now getting scared that my chances of dating Grace Vanderwell are 100% gone. <laughs> But see, now this is where it gets difficult because I genuinely believe that Daniel believes that he knew Grace in some sort of maybe schizophrenia or something like that, that he genuinely had a relationship with this young girl. And obviously that can trickle down into something very violent and chaotic. And so that is why I am not saying that, hey, just let him off the loose, let him go. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, well, yes, there is absolutely consequences for actions and Daniel does need to get some consequences. It feels like the jury that had elected these charges were very non-empathetic to Daniel's mental disabilities. Obviously, I'm not trying to demonize the jury. I wasn't there. I don't know what went down. Maybe some people were like, hey, he suffers with this. Maybe that was taken into account and it was still overwhelming enough that um, he was found to be unsafe. I don't know. I'm just saying off base, he has mental disabilities that seem to be pretty profound and should be taken into account is all that I'm saying. Now, the biggest issue with this is the specific specifics, right? He threatened to bomb the White House, which is already a red, 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 red flag, like Kool-Aid man, the reddest red that you can imagine flag. And he threatened to bomb specific people at their specific homes. And he may have used addresses and stuff. I'm not sure. Obviously those clips, I don't want to put in this YouTube video because it's YouTube. If I was the deciding factor, which I am not an expert, I would say Daniel needs to be for, for a while. I would say maybe a year, two years surrounded by professionals. I'm not saying lock him up in a loony bin and throw away the key. Like it's, you know, the 1900s, I'm saying he needs to be surrounded by people who understand mental conditions, so not law enforcement, and given proper time to express himself and express what he's going through and maybe be diagnosed, you know, something like that, because Daniel on the streets is not a good thing. Daniel does not know how to control himself. He does not know what comes out of his mouth. And the clips that I'll play you here that started showing up later, those clips got more and more violent as the years went on. They're calling 911 again. They're calling 911 again. And now, now they're joking that that was actually funny. Now the managers are joking that that was funny. The managers are the ones escalating this. Nice job trolling! That's pretty funny. I have proof that you guys were back in the back printing off my nudes off of the website. I have the Federal Bureau of Investigation in contact with me. Whoa. I never assaulted you. Step back right now. I never assaulted you. Step back right now. You know, I never assaulted you. You threw a table at me. I never assaulted you. You threw a table at me. Just because those people are causing issues, you wouldn't fucking blame me. Bro, you should have never took the phone. Here, Bob. Six chairs and tables at me. What's your title on you? It's Daniel Larson. Daniel Larson. Okay, that's right. Daniel, how's your YouTube channel going? Not good. No? There's been people that are manipulating and posting stuff without my permission. Oh, okay. And obviously, I could be wrong about this whole video, and he could just be getting worse rapidly. So, I think he definitely needs some professional help. I don't think he needs to be going to a prison. I think he needs to be put in some sort of a institution that can genuinely care and help him. Because Daniel used to be a sweetheart. Here's a very old clip of him. When I first came here, I actually was really nervous. That's 14-year-old Danny, who came from an extremely neglectful home. <laughs> <laughs> when his grandmother got word of Danny's situation, she moved here from California to be his guardian. Wonderful! And I think that that person's still in there. I'm not excusing what he's done, because he's done some pretty nasty stuff. I'm just saying all of it maybe wasn't fully Daniel's coherent fault. 